What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're talking about my five top favorite techniques for early spring fishing. Let's go. In recent videos, we've talked about where these fish are going during this spring transition. So today's video, I want to help you guys out and give you some of my favorite top five techniques. Now, the reason I say techniques and not baits because in each category, I have uh, a couple different baits for different purposes. So I'll explain as we go through the different categories. But today's video, top five techniques for catching bass in the spring. So in that uh, recent video of where bass go in the spring, you know, we talked a lot about uh, different types of, of fisheries, highland reservoirs, lowland reservoirs, uh, your natural lakes, your delta systems or your river systems, and then your ponds. And uh, since we covered that, if you guys haven't seen that video already, we'll link it down below in the video description. But uh, I want you guys to start thinking about uh, springtime fishing because depending on where you are in the country, it's happening really, really quickly. You know, guys, guys down south in Florida, like I said in that last video, already frogging and flipping. So it's coming sooner than later and uh, you guys need to be prepared. So first bait that I want to talk about is the A-Rig. Now the A-Rig is my number one go-to search bait, especially this time of the year. Uh, it allows you to cover a lot of water. Now this is a time that you do not want to be dragging a jig or shaking a shaky head. You want to be covering water to find those fish throughout that uh, progression, throughout that, that transition from winter into spring. Now these fish are gonna be thinking about spawn. So pre-spawn these fish are gonna be moving towards the backs of the bays. So it's all about moving baits this time of the year. Now an A-Rig, Both bladed and non-bladed are a great, it's probably why it's my number one bait. It's a great search bait. Like I said earlier, you can cover a ton of water and uh, you don't have to worry about missing anything. You know, you can, you can uh, fish your favorite spots as you're working your, your way back through those secondary points. You can fish quickly, but effectively, you know, there's nothing that really mimics a, a bait ball better than the Alabama rig. It is a lot of fun to fish and it is a very, very good technique. Now, I said bladed or non-bladed. Typically, if I'm dealing with uh, clearer water, I'm gonna go with a non-bladed rig. This is actually the Tactical Flex rig by Hog Farmer. It's got really light wire, so it's a lot of movement. Again, with uh, with the overnight temps not getting too cold, that water temp starts warming up, these fish are gonna be more active and uh, actively feeding. So throwing that A-Rig out there as you try and progress your way back to the backs of the coves, backs of the cuts, that A-Rig is, like I said, my number one search bait, but it also catches them really, really well. If there is a little bit of a stain in the water, that's when you can go with the bladed rig. But the A-Rig, the Alabama rig is my number one. Number two is gonna be the glide bait. Now I say the glide bait because I have three or four different ones down here depending on your confidence level and uh, your gear. But if you're looking to just get started or you're an advanced glide bait fisherman, it's really, really hard to beat for the price and for the fish catching, the S Waver 168 in light trout. Now this has been a bait that we've thrown for, I don't know, eight, 10 years, something like that. Uh, it's a great, it's a great bait to cover water. It's not gonna be as quick as the A-Rig because it doesn't fall as quickly. But anything in the area, especially if you're fishing an area or a fishery that doesn't get a lot of glide bait or big bait pressure anything that's in the area that you're fishing is going to show themselves to you you'll have a ton of followers you got to make sure that you're wearing good polarized sunglasses and always pay attention to your bait but if you want to find out what lives in your fishery 
throw a glide bait. Ooh, got some wind picking up. Throw a glide bait. The bigger, the better. Even if you don't hook them, they will reveal themselves to you and uh, you can come back later with an A-Rig or a crankbait or a, a Senko, something like that. But uh, you know, the glide bait, it's that real methodical, just that real lazy S turn. And how you fish these, these sink very, very slow. So you can add some suspend dots to it, get that thing down a little bit quicker. We like to change out the hooks, go with the owner 3X hooks, adds a little bit of weight, gets that bait to, to fall a little bit quicker so you can fish it deeper. But you're just gonna reel this thing. You know, every five, six, seven handle turns, you're just gonna do a twitch, twitch. And what that does is that changes that direction of that bait. So it's just swimming, twitch, twitch. And that provokes the bites. Nine times out of 10, right after those, that second twitch is when, get, when you're gonna get your bite. But the glide bait. So you're not just casting and burning like you are with the A-Rig. You know, you can fish slower if you need to. Say you're on a secondary point and there's bait fish, uh, you can slow down. Uh, and maybe there's a lay down. You can slow down and throw this glide bait by uh, that specific structure, that specific cover that's gonna hold those fish, and that glide bait is gonna either show you the fish or you're gonna get bit. Now, a few of my other favorite glide baits. They're fairly inexpensive in this category. Uh, the reason I say inexpensive in this category because custom swim baits, custom glide baits can go for hundreds if not thousands of dollars so uh, let's start off with this guy right here this is a custom color again we talked about clear water stained water with that a-rig adding blades if it's a little bit murky clear water highland reservoir lowland reservoir this is a custom s waiver color um, for tackle warehouse i believe it's tackle warehouse phantom trout don't quote me i will link it down below same great action it's the same bait as the 168 that light trout just seems to work all throughout that country, but if you are uh, in a fishery that has ultra clear water, give that bait a shot. The next one up, got my handful of glide baits here. It's gonna be this guy, this is the Sneaky Pete. It's a little bit bigger than the 168 S waiver. Now you're starting to get into the specific glide bait, swim bait category that you're gonna need specific gear. We'll link all our favorite rods and reels, line, all that stuff down below in the video description. But the Sneaky Pete's a little bit different action and uh, you can get real aggressive with it and it works really, real, really well in current, but it also comes with um, swiveling hook hangers. So those fish can't get le uh, leverage when you hook them. It just helps getting those fish in the bait boat when they, when they bite. And then two more for you, if you guys are looking to get into the bigger glide bait category like I said the bigger the better if you're looking for if you're searching you know some of the biggest fish I've ever seen were when I was throwing a 8 to 12 inch glide bait and just looks like a big submarine just comes up behind it and uh, caught some giants caught some double digits on it but uh, seen some absolute freaks uh, and, and it's just it's eye-opening what lives in a fishery uh, when they haven't seen a big bait next up is gonna be the s waiver 200 or the Bait Sanity, the Explorer. That's the, um, I believe that's also a Tackle Warehouse exclusive color. I believe that's Steelhead. But you can see the size comparison, uh, 200 size. I believe this is like a 230 size, don't quote me. But again, those are my favorite glide baits uh, for this category. Fairly inexpensive, like I said, in that category. So number one is gonna be that A-Rig. Number two is gonna be the glide baits. I showed you how to fish them. That, uh, that Explorer, that's gonna be uh, more of a wide, methodical um, swim. You know, we kind of break down our, uh, or Matt and I, we, ex we kind of explain uh, glide baits. We put them in two different categories, cover glides and open water glides. You know, the cover glides, you can get real twitchy when you bring it past that piece of, of cover or structure that those fish are gonna be on. You bring it past and add that twitch in, and uh, nine times out of 10, that's where you get bit. Those open water glides, you know, a lot wider swim, and it has a lot more drawing power, especially if you go bigger, clear water when you can see them farther away, it'll draw those fish up 
uh, so you don't give them as many real twitches or you don't do as as often maybe every 10 or 12 handle turns give it a, a real twitch now the next up for me was kind of hard like I said it's it's top five categories for for springtime fishing early springtime fishing and uh, I have a lipless crank a deep crank and a square bill depending on where the fish are in that straight stage where they are in that transition are they out on the secondary points starting to move back are they in the backs of the bays already did you have a storm where you have some moving water and now those fish just skipped stages one through four and they're already in the back in that super shallow uh, fresh water coming in so uh, let's go ahead and talk about the deep diver crankbait and then we'll go a little bit shallower each bait can't do this video without talking about the bait that we designed specifically for this cold water cranking as you're coming through winter it, this bait shines right now all the way through spring uh, but the tactical DD crank again it's not deep enough out here to show you guys how to fish it but uh, secondary points fish are moving along they're in that 12 to 20 foot range this is your bait that's gonna shine, especially if they're closer to bottom. If you try the A-Rig and you try the glide bait and those fish don't necessarily wanna come up, uh, try the crankbait. You can get those fish, you can trigger those fish into eating even if they don't wanna come up and eat the glide bait or the A-Rig. Uh, I have two baits here for you, two colors. I keep it really, really simple this time of the year, guys. I do my reds and I do my, my uh, ghost patterns shad bait fish patterns so really really simple but the deep crank is going to be uh, my next go-to bait with that said you guys know how much we love this bait right here this is a lv500 but the lipless category uh, specifically when you get up to the flats where these fish are eventually moving to in my opinion to effectively fish bottom and fish the flat, it is really hard to beat the lipless crank. You know, we've caught, between Matt and I, I don't even know how many double digits we've caught on uh, a lipless crank, but it just flat out works. And a lot of guys throughout the country don't throw it. You know, there's so many different lipless crankbaits on the market. You can see how I'm fishing this right here. I'm just hopping it just enough to fill that bait flutter three to five times letting it fall, semi-tight line, semi-taut line, um, just hopping it, dong. I mean, they're gonna, you'll get some of the hardest jig bites of the entire year hopping a lipless crank. Now, the other way that I like to fish these, say you do get some, uh, you get a, a early spring storm, now your creeks are flowing, now you got some moving water coming into your fishery. Those fish are gonna, like I said, skip stages one through four, and they're gonna be to the very back. Uh, and this bait right here, you can throw it up there and just reel it back. You know, you can add little little reel twitches, rod twitches, but just winding, just reeling the lipless crankbait is another killer this time of the year. Now with that said, if that is the technique you're gonna do, there are some better baits in my opinion than the LV500. You guys know how much we love that bait, how much we like hopping it. It's a three quarter ounce bait, kind of crashes to the bottom. Got some construction or something going on. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys some options. Down below in the video description, I'll give you guys my favorite colors, give you some options. Uh, here's another LV500 for you. That's uh, American Shad. That is a, that's an awesome, awesome bait. And then the, uh, let me set this one down for you. And then the Jackal, the TN70. Two different colors there for you. Try and get out of the shade. Got the sun setting over here but uh, completely different sound than the LV500. So that is another great lipless crank. I've been, uh, several times, uh, I've been fishing an LV500 or Matt's fishing a different bait, vice versa, and they're eating the, the TN70 and not the LV. So definitely give yourself some options when throwing a lipless crank. And then the last is gonna be the Strike King. I'll go ahead and turn this, get out of the sh shade. That's the, Red Eye Shad. That's the two tap. What I like about this, two things. 
One, it's not nearly as heavy as the LV500. So if you're gonna fish shallow, like I said, in that situation where those fish are up super shallow in that incoming water, go with a lighter bait. This one, it's a bigger profile, but it's a lighter bait and different sound. So you can change it up, but a lipless crankbait, very versatile. If you're hopping it or you're burning it, given those reel twitches, given the pauses, uh, a lipless crankbait is lights out this time of the year. And that's my number three, probably my number three, deep crank if they're deeper, and then the, the lipless crank. Next up is gonna be the square bill. Now, got a couple different ones of those for you as well. This is actually, this is the 13 fishing jabber jaw. And what I really like about this bait, it's got a moving bill. So, this bait has a ton of action. Now, springtime, like I said, these fish are, they're in that feeding mode. They are wanting to feed up. They're wanting to, they're thinking about spawning. They're wanting to uh, bulk up and, and do their thing. So uh, you can get really aggressive, get really aggressive crankbaits, real wide wobble, and uh, move them really, really quickly and trigger those fish into eating. So this bait has a ton of action. What's cool about the square bill, the reason I threw those in, you get a warm day in the spring, say you're on a highland or lowland reservoir, or you're in a backwaters on a, uh, a river system or a delta system, you get kind of have clear water, those fish are gonna get up shallow and they're gonna sun themselves. Uh, you know, they get up in that, that uh, upper part of the water column where it's a little bit warmer and uh, they just like to sun themselves, so they get up shallow. So this is where the, the square bill crank really shines. You can cover, again, you can cover a ton of water, just burning the bank, but also if you get to the back uh, and you're getting hung up on that lipless crank, I really like throwing the square bill because it deflects a lot better. You know, it's got that bill down there deflecting off stuff and it's a high float bait. So if you do get hung up and you don't want to go up there and, and unsnag or unhang your, your bait, you don't have to ruin the spot, you can just let off. And a lot of times that thing will float backwards, float up and uh, unhook itself because it is such a buoyant bait. So the square bill got a different, uh, different action obviously than the lipless crank. And I have a couple different baits that I really like. Again, this time of the year, I'm throwing your craw patterns, so your reds and your bait fish patterns, your ghost minnows, chartreuse shad, uh, you know, stuff like that. But uh, I typically start with the reds. Now this bait is silent. Those of you guys that have followed the channel for a long time know that when I'm throwing a square bill, typically I like a silent bait. I, For me, my opinion is I get bigger bites uh, when I surprise those fish, they don't hear that thing, that rattle coming from a long ways away, and it's more of that reaction bite. Um, you know, people have different opinions, and uh, I just like throwing a silent bait. But this time of the year, if you do get a little bit of stain in the water, you can throw a chartreuse or a white bait and throw something with rattles in it. So let's talk about the biggie. This is by far Matt's favorite square bill to throw in the springtime. You can see I added that uh, that VMC treble on there with the with the blade. That just adds a little bit of flash on it. But it's that one knocker sound. Very very effective bait. We've we've caught so many big fish throughout the years in the springtime on the this biggie right here, uh, and then specifically this color. This is called cold blooded. Um, that is. Kind of a ghost ghost craw pattern see-through pattern but again your reds your craw patterns and your bait fish patterns and then last but not least this guy right here this is the spro little john Whew. spro little john type r it's got a real subtle kind of like a rubber ball in there i don't know if you guys can hear that or not but um, that is another great bait to throw this time of the year, especially if you're throwing that, uh, that, square, uh, that square bill. Now, that is, I believe that's five baits. We got the glide bait, 
we got well we got the a-rig we got the glide bait we got the lipless crank the deep crank and the square bill so that's five I'm gonna give you guys two alternatives if you're on a fishery with grass hands down the chatterbait now specifically this is a color this is the the z-man that is the jackhammer that is green pumpkin shad, I believe. Again, I'll link it down below. And that is paired up with a spunk shad. You guys have seen the underwater footage, how crazy and how cool of a bait that is paired up on a chatterbait. But again, you're looking, you're finding these fish throughout the progression. And uh, say you get around cover, say you get around a grass line. In my opinion, there's, it's really hard to beat uh, a chatterbait or a bladed jig whatever you want to call them uh, a chatterbait in and around grass especially in that spring that pre-spawn transition but that guy right there you know again same same colors as as the lipless as the square bill go with your shad patterns go with your craw patterns your fire craw uh, you know the fire craw crank or uh, uh, under <laughs> can't even talk the fire craw jackhammers were going for for like 50 60 80 bucks a piece on ebay last year when you couldn't get them you know it's one of those baits that was winning everything um tack Wars actually added their own custom color it's called um i just ordered them today i think it's called spring craw more of a, a vibrant glossy color uh it's it's a lot like that lv 500 in the spring craw color but uh, check those out. I'll link those down below. But uh, again, your craw patterns, your bait fish patterns. But if you're fishing a fishery that has grass back in the back where those fish are going, that chatter bait is really, really hard to beat. Now, last but not least, you know, I did this video last year, but we've, we've got, you know, 100,000 new subscribers from when we did this video last year. So a lot of that, if you guys have been following for a long time, you guys know kind of the process how we walk people through the different seasons the different transitions so hopefully this is a refresher for you guys a lot of you guys but uh you guys that are new to the channel thank you for subscribing uh, we appreciate each and every one of you um, just trying to help you guys catch more fish especially right now warmer weather those fish are getting active now's the time you need to get out on the water so a lot of you guys asked last year you know what about a jerk bait I have it. There are certain times when this shines. Like right now, I got the Mega Live going. Go out here, I can search for those fish suspended. Uh, there are certain times when a jerk bait outfishes the other baits. Now, for me, I like to throw the glide bait. I feel that those fish that you're targeting with a jerk bait that are looking up, waiting for that bait to come by and then suspend. Uh, for me, my opinion is I get bigger bites and I get more committals. I get more fish to commit uh, throwing the glide bait. With that said, the jerk bait works extremely well. Uh, I think Matt's got a 12, 12 2 on a jerk bait in the springtime. I mean, big fish eat them as well. Uh, I mean, it's, they eat them great. If you can get those fish fired up, you can get that schooled up, school going. You know, we've, ta we've talked about it for many years. You don't have to catch the biggest fish in the school at first. If you can just catch one of those fish, even if it's a 10 incher or a two pounder, if you can get one of those fish to eat, now you got that whole school fired up. And with a jerk bait, it's that real erratic, real aggressive uh, action. So that is where that bait really shines if those fish are suspended and they're down in the depth that you can reach with the jerk bait that is where that bait shines so there it is guys that is my top five or six or seven techniques for this time of the year you know springtime it can be some of the best fishing of the entire year you know the sun is out things are warming up fish are biting the bait fish are active everything in the lake is just coming alive get out there and catch some fish if you guys try that a rig try the glide bait if you have the uh, the right gear try those bigger glide baits you guys will be shocked with what you see what you're what you catch 
Uh, and then the lipless, the deep crank, the square bill, depending on where those fish are, the depth they're in, where they are in that transition. If you have grass, go with that chatter bait. And if you don't have confidence in glide bait, go with that jerk bait and you guys will have success right now all the way in through spring. As always guys, thanks for watching. Everything I talked about will be down below in the video description. I'll link everything so you guys can go check out the pictures and check out the baits, the rods, the reels, the gear, all that stuff. But uh, you guys are amazing. If you guys learned something, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys on the next video.